that's really impressive. They put on a really good show too. I'm sure this is just going to continue to build. I'm going to talk a little bit about drop shotting, something I have a lot of experience with, especially on Lake Erie. That's kind of what I'm going to cater this towards. Um, I fish in the Bassmaster Opens, um, Northern, Centrals, uh, Southerns this year. And uh, what, what uh, I'm going to start with drop shotting is my setup. So I really want a, a rod that's limber. And usually I'm going to want at least something over six and a half feet, up to seven, depending. If you're fishing vertically, a shorter rod is usually good enough. But if you're drift fishing, a longer rod is going to be able to pick up the, uh, the uh, shock of the bite a lot better. Um, so this is a 6.9 uh, medium light rod, extra fast action. Um, I've got a uh, Shimano reel on this with uh, 12 pound, I use 12 pound braided line. This is Torre. And then I tie on a uh, leader. Usually, I go with seven pounds a lot. Um, a lot of people use eight. I just think seven gives you some, a few more bites, and that can really be key. Um, this, like I said, this is a seven pound Torre upgrade. And then for the leaders, a lot of people talk to me about what size of leader should you use from the hook to the weight. And uh, generally, I'll start with a long leader because then you can also you can always adjust it. And sometimes I'll leave a lot of tag line on the weight when I clip it on. Um, so I can move it pretty easily. With a hook, if I'm nose hooking, which a lot of times on here I am, because the key with the drop shot is you want to present the bait as naturally as you can. And um, this is really because this was really adopted because it's a live bait technique, but you're just adapting it with an artificial. So you want something that's going to be neutrally buoyant and riding horizontally, parallel to the bottom, as as a live bait would. A live bait. You know, when your, your minnow dies or something, you usually don't get as many bites. It's just hanging on there. It doesn't look natural. They're, they're not going to want to eat it. If it's just sitting in their face and it's got a nice little action on it, they're going to be a lot more prone to eat that bait. And another thing with the drop shots, um, a lot of guys like to drift with it and drag it, especially on Erie. And it's hard to control your boat on Erie, I know that. But if you can, I get a lot more bites if I fish it vertical. I'd say at least half of my bites are on the fall too. So if you're letting it fall and it's just going out like slanted, you're not going to get as many bites because it doesn't look as natural. If you're dropping it straight down on their head, it's a reaction bite. They're going to eat it. And I get at least half of my bites that way. So fishing it horizontally is really important. When I let it hit the bottom, if it doesn't get bit already, I'm just going to literally let it sit there. I'm not going to do anything with my rod. And I think that's really the key, especially with smallmouth. The less movement, the better. The current, the wind, the wave, that's creating an unnatural action with the bait. You really want a really soft plastic bait, something that's going to have a lot of action, not necessarily a lot of action, but a very subtle action. And that subtle action is going to look a lot more natural. And with the, the wind and the current and stuff, that's going to create a really natural look to the bait. And it's going to have a lot more chance of getting you, especially on the Great Lakes where it's very clear. The more natural, the better in that case. Um, I, a lot of times I want to use something with a flat bottom on it because it's going to make it sit a lot better, like sit horizontally. Um, hook size, I'm going to go one knot's pretty big if I'm using a really big bait, or sometimes it's actually better. I like a really big bait in the fall. That's a good time to catch, catch a really big fish. I know a lot of people don't like to use a big drop shot bait, but trust me, it, it catches some bigger fish at the right times. But nine times out of ten, I'm going to use something about four inches. Three and a half to four inches. You don't want to go too crazy. On, on the Great Lakes, you're really trying to imitate a goby, and you want to match that color. So like green pumpkin hues are good. Um, some things with smoke color in them, they're, they're really going to match those gobies. You've got to cater to the water color, too. So if the watercolor is really um, stained, say in Sandusky, Ohio, it's a little bit more stained than over here, you're going to want to make your bait have a little bit more, it's going to have to be a little bit lighter. Because those gobies in the, the off-color water, they're going to be a little bit lighter color. And the ones in, in the clearer water usually are a little bit darker. They're gonna, you're going to want to get the green pumpkins and a little bit darker hue if you're wanting to match them exactly. Depending on how deep the water, too, is going to vary the color of the goby. I mean, I wouldn't get too crazy with it when you start, but once you start to figure it out, 
I really like to mis mismatch what, like, what I'm using for color because it can really pay big dividends someday. And in clear water, the color means a lot. And another thing is scent. Scent is big, especially on Erie. The, when they're going to pick up a bait, a lot of times they'll pick it up and spit it out. You might feel a little tick or something and nothing's there. Sometimes that's a goby, granted, but a lot of times the fish will pick it up and spit it out because it doesn't taste natural. Something, I, I want a bait with a really good scent on it, and you can apply those scents on your own too. There's a new um, scent that I actually helped develop and is coming out this year. It's called goby oil. I was lathering my baits in those last year, and I literally got 10 to 1 bites standing right next to somebody. And like you last year at Sandusky at the Open, I finished sixth, and I caught more weight with three fish limits than each guy I fished with overall in the whole tournament. So I think you're getting a lot more bites, you're catching better quality fish. That scent's really going to differentiate how many bites you get, how big they're going to be. Because on Erie, a lot of those fish have seen everything. There's walleye boats out there catching them. There's perch guys catching them. There's boats out there all summer. So if you can differentiate what what uh, differentiate your bait scent wise, shape wise, if you can just give them a little something more realistic, they're really going to bite. It. If you can see fish on the graph and drop it to them, they're not biting it. You can change up the, the color dropping on them and catch them. It's really a trial and error thing. But that's that's something I really think is important. If if you do decide to drift. I would go with a little long, longer rod, like I said, like a seven footer. Um, I, I really, I don't like to do it unless you can really control your drift. If you're moving really fast, you're going to be dragging it. Sometimes it's going to pick it up off the bottom, and you're just wasting your time. In that case, I would go with a, a much bigger weight. Generally, I go with like a quarter on here. That's a, that's a really good place to start. Um, if it's really rough, I'll usually go up to a three eighths or a half. Half is drift is really rough. Three eighths is on an average eerie day, which we all kind of know what that is. Um, otherwise, that's that's pretty much my setup. And uh, check check me out on, on my website, destinthebrand.com. I have blogs, I have tips and stuff, YouTube channel. So feel free, and I appreciate it. And thanks again, Ben, and everybody. You guys put on a really good show, and thank you.